Mark chapter 7. Verse 24. And from thence he arose and went to the borders of Tida and Sidon, which is over by the Mediterranean Sea. Entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. Everybody's looking for him. A lot of pastors today, they want to be hid and they will be hid. They want people to find. They, there's certain pastors I know. They don't even want to know where you live, where they live. For a certain woman, and this shows this is not a parable. A certain woman. Now we're not going to give her name, but there's a certain woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. She comes to worship him. Now, in Matthew, we learn about. The disciples are going to get upset with this woman. She's constantly bothering them. She's approaching them, saying, Son of David, Son of David. That's not the cry of, of a Gentile. But we're not looking at that. We're looking at Mark. Mark is concentrating outside, no. Concentrating on Jesus Christ and the subject at hand, nothing else on the outside. So in other words, Matthew, Luke, and Parts of John will take, <clears throat> you're on Main Street, there's people going in stores, coming out of stores, in restaurants, buildings, and they're coming and going in their cars, they're crossing the street, and there's a car accident. And the Gospels will put, you know, this is what happened, and this is what this person saw, this is what that person saw, this person felt this way, that person felt that way. Mark approaches the police officer the people who are driving the cars, those who are in the car, and maybe a couple witnesses, everything else is not in Mark. It centers on Jesus and the subject at hand. As I said, in Matthew, we, we will learn that, and which we didn't see with the feeding of the 5,000, we get into, you know, disciples like, get rid of them. Let's go. Let's be alone. You said give us rest. This woman's bothering us. And then gives us more details. Not in the Gospel of Mark. And for a certain... Now, i got to realize, too, we have traveled great distance to where we are now. And you say, you know, nothing happened to Jesus from Galilee to where we are, from Jerusalem to where we are. Well, John said there are things that have happened that have not been recorded. So with the young daughter with unclean spirit hurt him and fell on his feet, worship. And a woman was a Greek, a Syrophesian by nation, a Gentile, and besought him that he would cast forth the devil, unclean spirit, the devil, out of her daughter. So it's remarkable that she comes. She comes to Jesus. She worships him. Matthew says she comes son of David, son of David, but that's not the Gentile call. Mark says here she is. She, she worships Jesus. And her daughter is, is possessed with an unclean spirit, a devil. But Jesus said unto her, let the children First be filled. Children would be the children of Israel. He's not sent to the Gentile. He's sent unto his own. For it is not meat for the children's bread and be cast unto the dog. The Gentiles. And you could say other things which he's calling her a dog. And that's the Gentile name of the, G of the Jews and their attitude to the Gentile. You're a bunch of dogs. And dogs are not like what we have today. You know, you have a dog in your house, you pet him, you feed him, you give him a, a dog bone, you give him a water dish, and he lays in his little spot or may lay on your bed. Or you No, these are scavengers. And they would roam the streets. And one of their purposes was, you know, to eat the scrap, to cl help clean the city. Well, in other words... Dirtying the streets also. And they're wild dogs. Dogs under the law and cats having paws. They're unclean. So they wouldn't have been in the house of the Jew. They would have. Uh, you take the very fact early in America, uh, the city of New York 
would have pigs and dogs in the street for sanitation. You wouldn't see that today because we know we get the street cleaners and all that. But that, that's what their purpose is. You're a scum. And it's kind of interesting that these scavenger dogs. Look what she says. She says, answer the senator. Yay, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. That's what the dogs were for. They're out in the street. They eat what you know people threw out. They eat, they eat you know the dead animal. They now. So she acknowledges to the Lord Jesus Christ as a Gentile. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm scum. I am nothing but an unclean dog. But. We get the nits and pieces. And that is what has been throughout the Jewish history. of Je See, the Gentiles were not excluded that the law would say, even if a stranger, that's what they were called, stranger, if a stranger would come, as God spoke to, to uh, Solomon at the dedication of the temple, if, the, if a stranger would come, a Gentile, and come worship you because he hears your wonderful great name, all right, hear his prayer. And some of the marvelous things that the Jews, though they're in a sick nation right now, would bring the attention of the dog, Queen of Sheba. Well, in the eyes of the Bible, in the eyes of the law, she was a dog. Queen, she was a dog. The Ethiopian eunuch under the, under the Queen of Ethiopia, he's a dog. Uh, Cornelius, a dog. Naaman, the servant to the king, he's a dog. And yet they got the benefits of the Jews. Now, us dogs, Gentiles, are in of the church age today. We have come to the Messiah. We are saved. We are given the Holy Spirit. We are adopted by God in God's family. <laughs> dogs. And Paul says that's to anger the Jew. You know, those people that you detest. I mean, look at Jonah. Look at Peter. Those people you detest. Well, now they're going to be in the kingdom. And the mystery. One of the mysteries is the fact is you got Jew and Gentile together under the shed blood, under the testimony, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this woman comes up and says, Lord, she worships him. She comes in the name of the son of David, which is not her title. She and She's like, okay, I'm fine. She acknowledges who she is. I'm a dog. You can't get people today to acknowledge who they are. Well, I'm a good person. You deal with, well, I'm still a good person. Well, no, you're not. No, you're not. In order to be saved, you got to be unclean. You got to be a sinner. In order to get a pardon, you have to acknowledge you have committed a crime, your sin. She is. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was coming to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. So she does get her prayer. So don't say, you know, at this point, Gentiles don't get nothing. Because there are many Gentiles in the book of Acts that get the benefit. Paul transitions himself from all Jewish to Jewish Gentiles to Gentiles and then some of the Jews. And she gets her prayer answered. She did not get offended that she was called a female dog. I'm not going to say the name. But get it. And there are some women today, you call them that name, and they think it's a pride of honor. Yeah, I'm the female dog. Well, pride ain't going to get you in the kingdom of heaven. Pride is not going to have you acknowledge your sins. Again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he's leaving the Mediterranean area. He came onto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. Now, that's a city that means ten cities. And I'll show you where we are wrong. 
Because we have a month called December. It is the 12th month. Deca is not 12. It's 10. Septi is not 9. Oct is not 10. So we even, by our calendar stand, we got the calendars all messed up. It doesn't even go by the rule. It's 10 cities. And there are some that give you the name of the cities. But, you know, it's just, if, if God wanted to know the name of the cities, he would have told us. He told us that clock was. And they bring unto him one that is deaf and had an implement. In his speech, he's dumb. He can't speak. I don't mean dumb as duh. I mean dumb. He can't speak. That's what the Bible means in the word dumb. So they bring him. And there's cases in the Bible where a person doesn't come. He is brought. Now, there was a woman, of a, a Greek. She's heard the fame of Jesus and comes to Jesus. Has your light produced people to come and seek Jesus? Has somebody who is in a church brought you to Jesus or they bring you to the church? It says they... Bring unto him that one that's deaf and impotent in speech, and they besought the church to put the, his hand upon him. That's not what it says. That woman, that Greek woman, it, it says that she came to Jesus. She besought him, not the church. Get that. Because even the very fact is that, you know, you only read the Gospels and that. They brought them to Jesus. They didn't bring them to church. And besought him to put his hand upon him. To lay it on hands for, for healing. He took him aside from the multitude. So there, there's that multitude. So Jesus takes the man and leaves the company. Why? Even the commentators, they unforeseen why. Put his fingers in his ears. Okay? Who? Did Jesus put his fingers in his ears or Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears? Now you assume the very fact is he can't hear, so Jesus would put his fingers in his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And the verse kind of like, who's doing what? Looking up to heaven, he sighed. All right, so the his and he and his and his is Jesus. Now, the sigh is kind of interesting. If you go to chapter 8, real quick, verse 12. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Where I say unto you, there shall be no sign given unto this generation. So the only two times recorded of him sighing is here in Mark. And you got to wonder with the condition. And it says he looking up to heaven, he sighed. Why? Is it the man? Because it's not the man that's come to Jesus. It's the people brought the man to Jesus. He's taking this man out of the multitude. Is it the multitude? The very thing is, one thing we do know, the spiritual condition of Israel it is sick, it is devil-possessed, 
And we know, because we read the Gospels, hopefully, we know at the end of each Gospel, when, when confronted with Pilate, the nation says, crucify him. These are the same say, hey, Jesus, heal me. Hey, Jesus, heal me. Hey, Jesus, get rid of this unclean spirit. Hey, Jesus, open my eyes. Hey, Jesus, open up my hearing. And... Uh, And you can just imagine him at this point. He says he's looking up to heaven. You just imagine him looking to the Father. And maybe, maybe I'm reading more into it. And if I am, I, I'm sinning. Maybe he's just looking to the Father. I can't believe these people. When they don't believe, they don't believe. Many of them, they just want something. And that's the sort of the case when you look at man, is, you know, you look at love. Most cases, love is lust and the heat. there's something that person wants from the other person. Without any regard to the other person. And there'll be somebody who, who goes into a employer and they just want something. He sighed. This, this is the first of two times recorded. You can't find sighed in any of the Gospels. And the, and the sigh in, in Mark 8 is they want the signs, but they're not listening. He takes this man out of the multitude. He's laid his hands on him. He spit. You know, you imagine if Jesus did this in America. It would be offense. And in the nation and in the region that they are right now, it is. It's offensive. The very fact is when, when Miriam gets leprosy and Moses besorts Jehovah, heal her. He says, well, what if it be the fact is that if her father would have spit? You know, give her, I forget how many days it was, seven days, something like that. And then, you know, we'll, I'll clean her up. Why did Jesus spit? I don't know. Other, other places he said, you know, your faith has healed thee. He didn't say faith. Maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe there's no faith. You know, you can get in, in line with Jesus. You can get in the healing line and not believe what's going to happen. Because there are places where, where it says that Jesus healed many, not all. Even his own hometown, which he's back in Galilee. It's, you know. Looking into heaven. Looking to where the father is. He sighed. And said unto him. Ephthana. That's a Greek word. Here's your Greek word for today. Congratulations. You learned Greek. That is. Okay. We're going to show you the definition. Then. Be open. You see if God wanted you to know Greek. If God wanted to know Hebrew. He put it in the Bible. And then he tell you what it means. You don't have to press one. It's there. And Jesus didn't say, well, you know, in the original Greek. <laughs> he didn't say that. Straightway, his ears were open. And the string of his mouth was loose. And he spank plain. So there's a healing. He didn't say anything to him about his faith. But he did heal him. He pulled him outside the multitude. The multitude, I believe, is not there. He said he'd take him aside from the multitude. You see, we've come to the condition in Israel that they're outright have rejected who, the, who Jesus is, the Messiah. 
Why should I heal this man in the multitude when they don't even believe who I am anyway? And that's the problem with the churches. Why bring all are welcome, bring your family and friends, when they're not going to believe, they're going to walk out of that service, they're going to walk out of that assembly, they're going to go about who they are, what they are, and they're not going to be touched. You think that your message, your meaning, your revival is going to touch the heart of all the world, you're impossible. Meanwhile, the other 51 weeks of the year, your church is living in sin. And the thing is, you know, they say, you know, they'll say today, you know, well, you don't go to church because of hypocrites and all that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I know we're all hypocrites. But the church is in a spiritual condition of Satan. There are some King James Bible churches that I left because the spirit of Satan is there. Not God. And I read in my Bible where churches, where Jesus Christ is outside the church knocking. Yeah, I know what that means. I'll give you the addresses. Now watch. <laughs> and he charged them that they should tell no man. All right. So tell them. So this is the man and those that brought him, them. That's more than one. Here's a charge. Don't tell anybody what happened here. I don't want them to know. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they have published it. They are doing what God said not to do. Jesus is God. Adam, don't eat that fruit. Adam ate the fruit. Go in all the world, preach the gospel. Oh, will you come to church? We're having a fellowship. It's Easter. Would you like to come to our Easter service? Hey, we're going to have a happy birthday thing at church this Sunday night. Would you come? That's not what Jesus said. He said, go in the world and preach the gospel. And the churches will turn around and say, you know, the great commission of Matthew. Matthew is not your commission. Mark is. Why is it from the time of Adam unto today, April 19th, 2023, why is it God says do it, man don't do it? God says don't do it, and man does it. Now, you wonder why Jesus looks up to that, oh, brother. I wonder, I wonder sometimes, because I've had dogs. Not sure, sure about cats. I wonder sometimes, why didn't Jesus Christ go to the cross for a dog? Because a dog is patient. You can take a stick 400 times and throw it off in the field. 400 times that dog's going to go get that stick and bring it back to you, sit down. That dog will sit at the door and wait for you and hear your car engine. And I know because we had a little chihuahua and I was told that dog would hear the car somehow and get up into the front window and wait for me to come in and be very happy. That dog, I say, you know, I, I, my dog, my pets were loud in the furniture. I say, come up on the bed. Boom. Before he said, come, that bed's, you know, he's it got his own little sleeping spot. That dog would be patient. That dog would be loving. That dog would be caring. That dog would do what I tell it to do. That's not man. And yet he calls that woman a dog. <laughs> You know, God, we read, I read today, no, I think it was today, I was reading today, so yeah, this week, sometime. I was reading, that there was a prophet who disobeyed God, don't eat or drink here in Samaria, get out of town, this false prophet came and lied to him, he come back, he ate and drank, 
And that false prophet says, you know, a lion's going to come and he's going to tear you to pieces. And the guy gets on his ass, he starts going off, and a lion met him, and boom, kills him. And when they say, here is the ass, here is the dead body, here is the lion. The lion did not eat that body, and that's not a lion if he kills. And a lion does not kill for the sport of it. A lion kills because I'm hungry. Hey, ravens. Yes? I want you to get that bread. And the, the Jewish say that the bread came out of Ahab's kitchen, which I don't know. But, you know, I want you to get some bread. I got a prophet over there. I want you to feed him. And they don't eat the bread. Now, I can picture Elijah eating the bread there and giving some to the birds. Well, how do they do? I'll tell you, you know, yeah, that guy, man, he, he's just rebellious. Or that. Mr. Ass, open your mouth and start preaching. And, you know, if God would open the mouth of a person in a Baptist church, a female, and he goes, look, you see what they're doing? You see what they're doing? You see how they're doing? You see what kinds of trouble? But boom. All right. He opened the mouth of the ass and the ass said what the Holy Spirit told him to say. This man gets his mouth open up and he does exactly what Jesus told him not to do. Noah didn't get the animals. God told him, say, listen, bunny rabbits, a male and a female, the rest of the children are going to go. Get on that ark. A male and female lion, get on that ark. And it's funny, famous paintings and pictures is going over Facebook right now, but they show, you know, the, the animals going two by twos. And it's really kind of, they show two lions. And it's kind of hard that you're going to have two lions have baby lions when they're both males. That wouldn't happen. Those animals lined up male and male and female. Noah didn't do anything. Two kangaroos, male and female. Two ostriches, male and female. Noah got in the ark, saw that the rabbits were busy. No, no, you guys got to go. Only two, because you guys are unclean. Sheep, two by two by sevens. Here comes 14 sheep. The animals listen to God. The, the ass opened his mouth and told what the Holy Spirit wanted him to say. The man's mouth is open and he goes and does what Jesus tells him not to do. Oh, Father, this, this creation, you gotta have, you gotta wonder sometimes. Why Jesus even went fully to the cross. He knew the whole the whole nation was going to be against him. Listen, he, the women were there. His mother was there. And only John was there. Still, what is the love of God? <laughs> and we're beyond measure astonished. Wait a minute, we're up seven chapters in Mark. They're still astonished what Jesus is doing. He has done all things well. That's a great testimony. He makes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. That's a testimony. In a few more chapters, they're going to say crucify. What about Barabbas. Oh, we'll let him go free. Crucify the one that's healing everybody. So I know it's scripture. I know it's prophecy, but still. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. Go ahead. Crucify. And you wonder why he looks up to heaven like, oh, Father. And you can imagine when Jesus got back to heaven and the Father and the Son together, his whole son tell me. It is much worse than the angels told us. 
Remember the angels? God says in two angels. What about Sodom and Gomorrah? Oh my. Father. Get the get the get the brimstone, get the fire, get the hail. Okay. The death angel. Well, how bad is it in Egypt? You're going to find houses that won't have blood. Really? Let's go for a walk. The prophet told him. And I guarantee knowing the Bible, knowing the straight gate is the few and the broad way is the, 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 the many. I know that not night in Egypt, many did not listen to God, a few did. I know that supposedly the churches have the entire 66 books of the Bible. They have access to the King James Bible. They have access to Revelation chapter 3. And yet they think their church is great. They think their church is wonderful. They think their church is the best. They think their church is beyond good. And it's absolutely what God said. Revelation 3, you think you're rich. You think you're wonderful. You think you're, and you're miserable. You're sick. You're naked. Oh, that's not us. <laughs> really? Oh, that big, nasty Catholic church. You're doing the same thing they're doing. And they got to the point today that they don't even say anything wrong with the Catholic church. I was in the church. You pray for every church you pass by. Oh, Baptist church, here is the daily bread, the, 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 the Catholic prayer book, or whatever you want to call it. And he took me, I took him aside and said, listen, oh, we don't speak evil of any religion. You don't know church history. I'm not going to defend a church that killed my brother. I'm sorry, many, many of the Baptist preachers don't know church history. 